Hello, everyone, and welcome to round three um, of a special series tribute to a, an early pioneer of this game uh, who has been very influential in the development of this game's uh, competitive element to the community we see today. Uh, we do this in his honour due to the very sad news of his deteriorating health from lung cancer. My name is Mike, a longtime friend and rival of David's um, and competitor of last year's annual tournament. Uh, I'm joined today once again very kindly by Game Draco, who, like myself and David, is an, also uh, an old school runner of this game to support this event. Uh, last match, we saw Ace and Domre compete in one of the most intensely anticipated duels, mm -hmm. where Ace, having won more races than his rival in that match, now places first so far for the overall competition on points. Today's round features Alaskalar, who competed in the first round of. Uh, the 2021 annual event yesterday for this game, and Paige, who competed in last year's tournament, who finished joint seventh alongside Lightning Pirate. So today they're going to battle, battle it out to compete to see if any of them can top the challenge presented so far. Yeah, this should be a fun match because these players are pretty evenly matched. Yeah, I, I thought it's it's definitely going to be very interesting. Um, they're going to be playing all seven of the amateur circuits of this game um, in sequential order. Um, that's basically the format, and we're going to use the results of those to determine the outright winner. So they kind of get points depending on uh, how well they perform. So obviously you want to do as best you can on every single track. My money is on Paige for this first race because she's... Very close to the boot to train world record now. Yeah, it's a, certain players definitely have uh, have their favorite tracks and what they're good at. So I think that's definitely a case here. So uh, the platform so. is um, PC, we should probably say. Yeah, just uh, in reference there to a question in Twitch from Acid Coven. Yeah, the PC is like like uber tier version of this game though you can get it on nintendo 64 which is how i played the game and you and also recent and also it's available for sega dreamcast and last year got ported to the ps4 xbox one and switch yeah i think switch actually is um rather a new it's a new version isn't it switch is, is quite new it's only like a year old if i understand right yeah same with the ps4 for an Xbox One version. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a track that I know I spent a lot of time on, um, you know, initially when I when I was first learning the game. I mean, it's kind of natural being the first track, but um, I think just because it just happened to fall so close to the 30-second mark, it was always like my goal for the second lap to, uh, you know, do under 30 seconds uh, for this track, which I finally... Uh, managed to do i think it was in about 2010 i think so it was a good 11 years ago and that stood for a almost a decade yeah i actually had a feeling i'd done a 29.8 at one point possibly in like 2007 or 2008 but i didn't have uh, i didn't have any video of that so oh and a guy just said man how long has this been out love seeing the classics going it has been out since 1999 as it came out with the release of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace movie that came out in May of 1999. Yeah, the, the trouble is, is that like, I th there wasn't very many competitive players of this game other than like myself and Game Drake and my co-commentator, for example. So it wasn't really very well known. It's only now that like there's been the new Star Wars films coming out and there's a, and there's loads of new players doing this game that we can, like, do these big events and things. So, you know, it's now we're sort of getting the opportunity to, uh, you know, have a little bit of competition with these games, really. Yeah, and it really opened up come 2017 with the uh, GOG and Steam releases of the game especially. I mean, see, we've got on the screen as an example, we've got David's Times here as a comparison. We can see the abbreviations of each track, which says, for example, BTC, Bunter Training Course, and we've got the time, 135.67. So these are the times for the amateur circuits, um, which is kind of like a bonus award if the players can uh, achieve them. But obviously, if you add up all those times, it'll give you an idea as to how long uh, it takes to do all seven. Yep, Paige is off. Good. And Zalaskar is off. 
and and Paige has really grounded this grinded this track into the ground compared to most runners of this game. So and if uh, she gets 135, she will, I think, beat both Ace and Dumbrake in this tourney for this track. Yeah, it's taking a very short line there. And looks like something's, I think it's a server load issue. So, yeah. And we're going to see. Here we go. And here we go. Page into the final lap with a 32. So I have to do a really fast third lap. This last score with a 33 first lap. Yeah, she's on good heat management as well. And here we go. Final boost. Yeah, so we could see a sub 35. 32, 33, 34. 35.95. I think that is a record for 135.946. That is a new record for book to training for this this event. Yeah. For, for, for this event. That is the first 135. So that actually puts Paige ahead of both Ace and Dumray for this match. And Zalaskar came in with a 139. Yeah, I don't think we've actually seen that on the stream, though, have we, sir? So... Yeah, I think the I think the stream end is like a bit slower on bitrate, which is what's coming up with it. So, but Zalaskar comes in with a 139. It looks like now. In between races, you see Paige switching, switching her uh, pod parts for Mongaza Speedway, which is the track David was best in. Okay, so what we see there, 39.66 for Zalaskala. One. <laughs> One thirty. And one person said, who was David Stubbs? If you saw the entry, he um, he is a veteran runner of this game, was um, really masterful on manga as a speedway and book to training, especially top five and top three to this day. And we're doing and about a month, about a month and a half ago, he came up to this community saying he's dying of terminal cancer. So we're just doing this in his honor. This is a track that is a case of blink it and you'll miss it. Yeah, this is a very, very short track. The shortest of all the tracks in the game, actually. But it's pretty straightforward. Um, but having said that, it's also one that's very difficult to get a good time on, I think, because it's hard to hold some of these... Uh, boosts around the corners, which you really need if you want to have a, a good lap time. Especially with Ben, because he's so stiff, you can hold the boost, the longer boost, a lot easier with Mars and Elon Mac, especially. And Slaskar so coming in with a 15. Well, at least we get to see a race this time. That's that's good. Yeah. Five. <laughs> 15.06, and I think we're syncing it up, so... And Paige might have froze accidentally, but Zalaskar's on a 13. And we see... And here we go, Zalaskar comes in. Oh! Nympho crashed. Paige crashed. Zalaskar has a 42.290. So we have a 42.290, and Zalaskar and Paige comes in with a 47.59. So we are now have a tie going into Beatles Wild Ride, which is the third track, 
and one of the hardest of the amateur circuit because of how slippery it can be, quite literally. Yeah, definitely a much more challenging track, this one. But um, we've got a lot of players now who have actually had a death in Mongaza Speedway, so those um, those points are actually going to be rather essential, you know, like just the differences there, you know, the uh, between sort of the 45 to 48 second mark are actually going to be important times. Oh, the last score is going to use Aladar Beto for this, it looks like. That's unusual. <laughs> Well, I will note that Zalaskar said he's a big fan of using Aldar Beto. Yeah, I think, didn't he use it last year in, um, or maybe it was Nacho, I can't remember, as, as a no-upgrades pod, possibly? Yeah, and he lost because of it, because the other guy used bowls. <laughs> and that was... But, you know, I know he did play full track with Beto a few times, and one time I... <laughs> And and last year there was another runner named King Bean Dip who did Beto with Gravine Gateway as a joke and troll move. <laughs> yeah, we should probably also explain there are uh, some. This game being quite old is is rather broken in a lot of ways. So it's possible um, for players to actually use like what we define as skips. Where they can like do maneuvers that you wouldn't like not normally intend to be done by the game, um, but we're disallowing them for this event. So it's just going to be the rather the full track versions of each circuit. And looks like so Lascar is off, and so is Paige. I know. I wonder how much uh, being a Vito fanboy is going to cost us time for Zlaskolar. Yeah, I guess he's rather taking this event more casually, because obviously it's rather a serious disadvantage to go with Aldar. Um, I mean, there aren't many stats really where Aldar's better than Ben. I think his cooling's better, but that kind of doesn't really count for much with this. Um, ben just has a much longer boost and a much higher top speed, so that's going to, uh, you know, make a significant difference here. So, uh, let's see. 58 with Beto, 55 with Paige, with Ben, and... He's taking the tent with Beta, which has the worst traction of any pod in the game. One of the worst turnings in the game, too. And now you can see that distance really starting to grow between Ben and Beto into the second lap. Yeah, surprising, actually. I mean, and as well, I mean, with the the tunnel, then we... we... Oh! Zalaskar crashes into the wall because of his greasy handling. Yeah, so that is a potential issue, uh, as you as you said. Yeah. Oh, and Paige crashes with Ben. And Paging coming in with a fifty-eight. At the 56. So the last car crashes into the tent. So that's not going to lose him quite as much time because of the speed boost. Jeez, that was an odd death by Paige. Yeah, missing the, uh, missing the, um, bridge there, rather. Yeah. Well, you can see why you can call it Beto's Wild Ride with this uh, crazy section over the ice field. And here comes Paige for this final portion. Yeah, Risky by Zalaskal are actually trying to go through that narrow uh, gap on the ice field, actually. And Paige comes in with a 2.48. And Zalaskar coming in with a 
4.89. This is what happens when you choose the first, the fastest pod versus the third fastest in this game. Massive margin. And Paige crashed more, yet still got a faster time. Yeah, I think with... Uh... I think with e everything else being equal, you'd expect that Ben would do do better here for the most part. I mean, you're not going to do a 248 probably with Bido, I imagine. So Now we're going to Aquilaris Classic. Yeah, pretty straightforward track, this one. Um, I would say actually in some ways it's simpler than the Bunter training course, although it does have the the moving doors, which are, if you don't familiar with the pattern, it can be a bit of an issue, although... With these two players, I mean, they're uh, two very good players, so they should uh, should know what they're doing with that. Uh, I wouldn't think that would catch them out. All right, here we go. Okay. I think this is one of the tracks where both of them are pretty evenly matched. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't like to say he would have the advantage on this track, actually. Yeah, it's like only more. I feel like the most obvious advantage occurred during um, moved to training. So, and the page is struggling to get his stream, so we're gonna see how Zalaskar fares through this. Final figure eight and comes in with a 53.93. Yeah, it's pretty good first lap time. Yeah, he's on he's on a sub 240 pace at the current rate. Yeah, I would think so. I, I, I should probably know. I've played this track probably five or six thousand times at least. So, uh, We see there the changing movement of the gate, so we don't see any movement on lap one. We see them on lap two, though, so it allows you to take a slightly shorter line through that section. And the gates will move in a different pattern on lap three. Yeah, looks like Zalaskalar just managing his boost effectively, making sure he doesn't get the engines too cool and lose time, and at the same time not overheating too much and boosting too often, so... 53.01. So, probably get coming in for a 240. Yeah, I think Domre has the best time so far with 237.7. So, uh... yeah. Yeah, no, man, they're really neck and neck. Let's see, we actually get to see Paige. Yeah. Going into the final stretch, we're going to see. Looks like. Looks like Zalaskar's in a slight lead. Oh, yeah. no! Zalaskar crashed right in the figure oh, eight. That's very and, unfortunate. And, info, and Paige comes in with a 238. Very unfortunate death from uh, Zalaskala there. Uh, 238, and looks like um, Paige is now having technical difficulties. And let's see if their times were post. And, and Paige just told us she got a, a 238.50. Yeah, that's what I got as well. I didn't get Zalaska last time though. He said he got he said a two forty five. He said a two forty five. Okay, yeah, so we'll have to just go with that for the moment. Um and now we're going into the uh quarter final track. Yeah, this track is definitely one of the more interesting and challenging ones i think um i would say you probably crash in this track more often than aquilize classic for sure i would say 
particularly in the final hairpin. Yeah, there's actually a few sections. Uh, I mean, it depends on what kind of strategy you use, but um, there, there are a few other sections as well, which uh, personally I found like I tend to crash more at. So it, I think it depends on your strategy and your skill level a little bit as to which corners can be most risky. So you have to kind of do kind of a risk assessment, risk management with some of these tracks. Yeah. Yeah, and this is a track where you where having greasy handling is best because the most optimal configuration for traction and frame rate for this track is the bare minimum at 2420. Yeah, if you use a very high frame rate, then you'd have to actually break for the final corner, which is obviously a disadvantage. So, um, but the uh, the con obviously of using. Uh, this uh, low frame rate is like uh, Game Draco is saying is that it does make the pod very very greasy with the handling. So um, it's very you know very very slippery, and you have to really pay attention to your lines. This track I actually held the world record on for this game for about six years, and I did on the 64, which is fixed at 24, and I did it at 24 R600. And now it looks like Paige is ready and both Zalaskar is ready too. So we're ready. I think we're getting ready for the quarterfinal round of this track. Yeah, I don't think in, in our day of racing, we paid too much attention to this idea of uh, setting up. It was very much a case of just uh, do the track and see how, you know, try and improve your best time really. So there is the yeah. strategical element now that exists with this, uh, this game really just, um, you know, that we weren't really so aware of back in the day. Yeah. And especially when we first started, because the first games and also the console ports were fixed at frame rates. Yeah, so we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen any of David's times uh, been beaten yet. I don't believe, although it's having said that, it's rather a difficult task. I think. Well, I know Domray and Ace beat both of his times on Aquilaris Classic, and Ace beat his Vengeance time. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I mean, during this match, I don't think we've seen a, a better time there yet. Yeah, so I think we'll see how they get on here. And both are off. Nice sync pause. What is that trigger thing that's activated on Zalaskar? I'm not familiar with that. Zalaskar is playing with the approved multiplayer mod. All right, I'm just thinking, because this is a single player event, so I'm just wondering what that has to do with anything. But No, it's partly due to the mod. Ace Page coming in with a 36. Zalaskar, a slight lead for him. So, so this is the second lap, and this track is also based off of a real-life racetrack in Sonoma Raceway, which is in Northern California. Solid hairpin by Page. That is a 34.64. That's actually pretty solid at uh, 36.14 for Zalaskar. So Paige is in the lead yeah, we by saw about it. two seconds. Yeah, we, if, we saw if she... If, we, if she survives the hairpin, she'll, she'll get it. Here we go, the final hairpin for Paige. Very clean. And that is a... 146.29. And the last car coming in with a 149 point, point oh six six. So that is another win for Paige. And now we're going into the two final tracks in Vengeance and Spice Mine Run. I've just noticed it's 4-1 to Paige at this point for, for their match. Yep. 
That was very close to Aces Mal's there time, actually, who's our current leader for M100 with a 146.1. So, um, yeah, that was a good result. This track is just... This is another track where you where it's most optimal to do the highest frame rate at the highest traction, mainly due to the anti-gravity tube that makes up a bulk of this track. And page is off. Okay. So Lascalar hasn't got the countdown notice yet, so. And there's Paige doing the boost fling, which is something that I found back when we were playing in the day. You have this cog shaft. That's really hard to dodge. And now here we're and now we see Paige going into the brutal Uvu tube where you have all these rocks and then that purple reactor core beam where if you hit it it kills you yeah we see she's using uh 48 fps as well for her setup as we discussed um a little bit earlier yeah we can see he's alaska are now fortunately so um also going through the uh, dreaded uvo tubes We have 103 by Paige. Yeah, it's pretty good first lap. We don't see, I think, you don't really see much better than that. For a world record pace, which is what Dumray and Ace were on in the last match, you need a 101 first lap. Yeah, it'd be a high 101, though, so it'd be like a second or so better, wouldn't it? And 104. Here's the second Ubu second run. Narrowly dodges the reactor core beam. Yeah, so Laskala holding the boost through that section, so let's save it. Looks a like he Oh, take a death. He got a little I think he got a little greedy and broke. Here comes Paige with a 102.44 yeah so decent pace that that last section of the track can be very bumpy actually it's, we saw that um i think it was metallica possibly got caught out by that in uh, his match earlier so when your pod uh hits the ground very hard it forces oh, you to page got miss got a bad line and crashed while boosting yeah, she was holding the slide button while turning. That's what's caused the death there. Yeah, that section tends to kill you really easily. But but this whole track is full of parts that will kill you easily, which is what makes it so hard. It's easily the hardest track of the amateur circuit. Yeah, for sure. It's nice of uh, not to be joining us as well. Uh, 310 with a death. Last score, Spain in the tubes, narrowly dodged the reactor core beam. 310.856. Oh! Crashes upon exit. I think he hit a rock. Yeah, it's the last guy I had a bit of a rough time on this uh, track. The neck end. And now we're going into the final track in Spice Mine Run. And this track is, I would say, deceptively easy because it feels so easy with all the straights, but then there's parts when you're going for the full, going for an IL record that just sucker punch you. Yeah, it's it, it, it can be quite dangerous if you're not careful. I think um, I think any any track where you sort of perceive it as being an easy track is um, 
is definitely one like you're, you're more on your guard if you play something like graveline gateway you you're paying attention and you're you know but with these sort of tracks you can easily sort of forget what you're supposed to be doing and even something simple like just forgetting to you know manage your boost correctly or something which can you know can basically lose you the same amount of time as a death if you're not careful so you, you do have to pay attention yeah so final uh track of the amateur circuit for these two players so we should see them starting in about the next 10 seconds or so there we go here we go both of them are off And yeah, it's pretty straightforward at the start. Nothing really too uh, too tricky. We have this um, conveyor belt that they go over, which will um, give them additional uh, speed boost up the hill. And there's Paige firing the booster on the conveyor belt for a massive spike in speed going into this. Yeah, I think Zalaskal are underheated slightly, so that's going to lose him a little bit of time. And here we go. Looks like they're really close going into the first lap. Oh, Paige crashed! Oh, that's that's the corner that I hit in the uh, 2019 tournament. <laughs> a 115.99 for Zalaskalar. And a 120 for Paige. That's what happens when that's about a five second loss that takes when you die at a random spot on average, which in that case was right around the average because there was no slope and no off road. Yeah, so you say the deaths uh, are not equal in terms of time loss. It depends very much on how much, uh, how hot the engines are and at what point in the track you crash. Because obviously if you crash just before a very winding section, it's not going to be as time loss as if you do it just before a straight, for example. You see Paige is uh, very wary of that corner now, having uh, hit that on the previous lap. Yeah, now the last girl's on the final lap. I think she made up a little bit of time, but I don't. it's not going to be enough usually for uh, a death. And Zalaskar managed to dodge the dozer, so is Zalaskar. Yeah, fortunately, they're, uh, it's just a little bit further up, so it's not too much of a concern. When, you, when you're when you on a very quick pace, the bulldozer's literally right across the track, it, straight in the line, so you have to literally drive through it in order to uh, make it, which can which can kill you if you're not careful. You have to... There's only specific positions that you can drive through that on your pod and survive. Yeah, you usually have to go... You also have to tilt to narrow your hitbox to survive it, too. Yeah, so the last section here, so they need to use much of the boost they can for the remaining section of the track, because there's not much track left, so they don't need it on the last straight. Uh, 346 from Zalaskalar. And 348 with a death. Wow. She made up quite a lot of time there, actually. Surprising, yeah. Yeah, that actually was quite a close race in the end, which interestingly. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Well, congratulations on uh, your win today. Yeah. Hey. That was GG, man. Thanks. Some 
some questionable deaths from me. Yeah, I, I see you, you did you did a me on the spice mine. I see. Yeah, <laughs> that one death from you has stuck as the description for that spot. <laughs> it's it's so easy though, isn't it? Because it's you, you can hardly see it. So it's very difficult to judge where that corner is. Yeah. So it just happens. But I mean, even so, I mean, you were five seconds behind after lap one and then you know at the end of it you managed to well you must have made up three seconds i mean you're you know you had good good uh, boost management and uh, etc so you know you pulled back three seconds there on the last um the last part and obviously that's still that's still uh still quite important because obviously if anyone else plays then um you know you want to make sure you get the best time you, you can so yeah yeah well done thank you Yeah, so that's a. Yeah, that was an interesting match, too. We had technical difficulties at first, but it got resolved by the end, which was nice. So we were able to complete it. Yeah, fortunately, surprisingly, we managed to get all that in in time, but uh, it's good news. <laughs> how, did, how did you two both feel about your performance today? Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, glad I managed to. I'm glad I managed to break the 135 barrier in tournament for Boonta training. Yeah, you're you're now in the lead actually for that track, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, and nice. who's left to go? Um, I can actually answer that question. It'll just take me a couple of seconds. So we've got. Um, let's have a look. We've got Bol Rempley, um, we've got King Mean Dip, uh, we've got Renegade, Digital Unity, uh, and that's no good. Okay. That's the final remaining plays. Yeah, but so, there's, uh, I mean, there's a really there's a very good chance that that time will stand then. Yeah, we, with um, Mongaz is going to be quite interesting because uh, there's quite um, there's quite a lot of times there with around sort of forty five. 46 47 seconds so um yeah so we're seeing quite a lot of deaths i mean obviously there's that one death and then you get that kind of time so that's going to be interesting to see how that mm -hmm. that goes as well i'm very curious where the point totals are going to wind up on this one yeah the um the, the point system basically is so the players i've, I've sort i think i would explain this at the start of, of um this match but yeah basically so players are obviously going to have you know going to be compared so we're going to use all the results we've got for each of the tracks for each player and compare them with every other player so we can effectively create matches which didn't didn't occur but we can use the results that we've got to oh yeah decide you know i mean that's the um, entire advantage of a system like this yeah so it basically means that you know you don't have to play everybody you can just do one match and we'll use those results as a guide as to you know how we've how everyone's done so okay. I don't know much else to say. I think we did pretty good, and I'm glad everything worked out in the end so that we could actually do it. Yeah, that was fun. Hmm. But, uh, I guess I will head out. Okay. So, so with this, I think we can just say good luck, and may the Force be with you. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks everyone for participating, and thanks to Speed Gaming and to Game Draco, my co-commentator, and to all the participants who've taken part in this event. So I know that David would uh, very much appreciate this. So thank you.